it's nice to be out there just playing with a smile on my face. And it's becoming the Tour Alangi show. You know, we feel free again. Got through the hole, scores. Manu, it's been a little while. You're back now, which is brilliant for everybody. You get told, you know, you're going to be out that long. You know, at the start, you think, oh, you know, a long way. You know, sometimes you, you have doubts in your, in your head. Um, sometimes it's quite hard to stay positive. The biggest thing was having um, Matthew Tate here. You know, he, he had the same thing. Yeah. He said, yeah, he'll take a long time. The, the first six months, uh, 12 months, it's going to be a bit tight um, around the groins. Everyone's got Manu Tuolangi. He's like Inspector Gadget. Just impossible to stop. They love him here. Manu's a Leicester man. He wants to play for Leicester. This is the only place he wants to be. He's a young bloke. Uh, he hasn't got a care in the world. He's had a horrible time injury-wise, and he just wants to play. When you look back at your childhood, and I know you know you grew up playing with your your big brothers, you had to mix it, didn't you, from a from a very young age? They say the youngest is always the toughest. So, <laughs> 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 nah. For me, you had to be tough. You know, there's there's no option. When I was growing up, my brothers would always say, "If you want to play, don't cry. If you get if you get smashed, don't cry. But if you want to play, it's up to you." My brother's uh, Vi, he's two years older than me, and Andy. So I think um, I was about 10, um, they were 12 and 14, and they were, they, they're trying to teach me how to, to tackle, and we were doing this in our house on concrete. And um, they say, all oh, right, man, yeah, this is how you tackle, you know, stick your shoulder in. Okay, go and stand over there, and uh, we're just gonna run at you. <laughs> So I learned pretty quick, but also I, uh, I couldn't make it to school the next day. <laughs> so The loss of your World Cup chances must have hit you particularly hard, even allowing for the injury manner. Did you feel that, that that brush with the law was potentially going to cost you a lot of England caps? It was tough at the time, but you know, for me, I just focus on, on, on what's positive and you know, what, what my next stage was. You know, I knew that the World Cup was gone. Um, I, w I wasn't going to be fit to play. Um, so all I was looking for, you know, um, having a bit of time off, you know, went back home and um, have a bit of time with the family. So where's the, um, where's the ferry jumper? Where's the bunny ears at, at Downing Street? Is that guy still there? Uh, look, mate, you know, you, you've got to have fun sometimes. You know, you can't be can't take yourself too serious. Those days are gone, but I'm a fun guy. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's just me, mate. You know, he's still a young fellow. That's not, uh, just because he's, he's a superstar doesn't mean that um, all those things come easy to him. So I'm, I'm just enjoying him having him in the, in the, around the place, smiling, having a crack, having a laugh. How exactly is Eddie Jones's regime different to what's gone before? He was pretty tough from the start. Uh, the start of Six Nations, you know, sometimes he, get up and, and they'll have um, the backs or do some plays, uh, a few plays at eight o'clock okay. before they have their breakfast. You know, he said to me, I don't care if you get it from nine or 10, just get a ball in your hands. And, you know, his message is, you know, it's pretty clear. Um, and that, that's what you want as a player. I spoke to Eddie uh, first time and he said, oh man, you know, well, I wanted to, <laughs> to play 12, so. Obviously, I've played 13, um, pretty much uh, my professional career. I was a bit, you know, oh, 13, 12, you know, different. I'm actually enjoying it, playing 12, because you actually get involved a bit more. Now I've played 12, it's just a number. I think a lot of people would love to know, Manu, what it is like to be the guy who is doing so much damage on a rugby pitch. What does it feel like when you, you're feeling fit and healthy? Yeah, it feels unbelievable um, just to just to be back on the pitch you know having the guys here you know all quality players around you um, it makes you, it makes it a lot easier do you feel like you're world class yet um, I think nearly there it'll come just one final one on Stad. What did you learn in your meetings in the pool stages that, that will prove pivotal against them on the weekend? Gloucester at the weekend, we had 15 chances to score. We took five. We might get four at the weekend. Got to take them. 
we know that, and it'll be great. We're looking forward to it. Quarter final, Walford Road, Stade Francais, great history between the two clubs, two of the biggest clubs in Europe in the last 20 years. What, what isn't there to like?